Hello everyone, this lecture video is all about diagnostic and therapeutic uses of heat and cold. Let us start with diagnostics of the two. A person's overall temperature can indicate the presence and seriousness of an infection because one of the body's defense mechanism against diseases is to raise its temperature. Of course, if the temperature becomes too high, it can be of danger to the person. So when this happens, an, an external intervention is needed such as rubbing an alcohol, or putting a wet cloth on the forehead and wiping the person's body with wet cloth, something like that. that. Those are the external interventions to lower the body temperature. Then we also have a low body temperature can also occur or also known as hypothermia in some medical situations and this one also requires attention. The body temperature affects the gas content of the blood and also the blood flow. So if there is an increase in temperature, the blood vessels, the capillaries will widen and there will be a surge in, in blood flow. There will be a speed and increase in blood flow. Next, let us discuss the relationship of skin temperature, infrared radiation, and thermography. So the skin temperature here is lower than core temperature but higher than the normal room temperature. Uh, the normal skin temperature is 34 degrees Celsius. It is therefore possible to measure the infrared radiation from a person. We do this by performing a thermography. The doctors are using a sensitive indicator of surface temperature which is the infrared radiation and they call the technique as thermography. Thermography is therefore the technique of measuring infrared radiation and thereby mapping the temperature. It's such as this one. It indicates blood supply since one of the main methods of heat transfer in the body is blood flow. Then a depressed skin temperature means deficiency in the blood flow on that region. This could be caused by clotting, stroke, among other things. Then a locally elevated temperature can indicate a uh, Tumor. Such tumors grow very rapidly compared to other tissues and thus require an increased blood supply. So if a region here has an elevated uh, temperature compared to other area, there can be a presence of tumor because these tumors grow rapidly and therefore to sustain that growth, there must be an increased blood flow. So the temperature is very high there because of the increased blood flow compared to the other regions. The picture obtained from the thermography is what we call the thermograph. It plots the heat. Now let us discuss the therapeutic uses of heat. Heat applied to sore muscles relieves pain. The mechanism of elevated temperature comes in two ways. When there is an elevated temp, there will be a relaxation of the muscles and, and there will be an increased blood flow. There are many methods of treating various ills with heat. The simplest is by conduction, this one. You, uh, examples of this is by hot towels in which you will use hot towels. For example, if you have a sore muscle, a sore a neck muscle, you will put hot towels. And then heating pads on back pain as well, shoulder pains. Then heat transfer by radiation is also feasible. Heat lamps are being used because heat lamps emit most of their energy in the form of infrared radiation. So for example, a newborn infants are sometimes placed under an infrared heater. And this infrared heater uh, is being used to replace the heat they would have received from their mothers. So within a few hours of birth, an infant's temperature control mechanism works well enough that the heater is no longer necessary. And then, electromagnetic radiation can also be used. We call this as deep heating. We also have deep heating using the microwaves, such as radio diatomy. This application of heat must be carefully controlled to affect only the intended area. Next, we have here ultrasound diatomy. It is another form of heat treatment. It is completely different from those using conduction or radiation because this one uses sound. The ultrasound can carry energy into the body, depositing it as thermal energy or as heat energy. So, next, we also have here the therapeutic uses of cold the lower temperature acts as a local anesthetic children for example children who are teething are found of sucking on ice cubes to relieve pain so and the next sweating can be reduced by ice box for example you are in a basketball play and you injured your foot your ankle and when that happens teammates often and you as well are being advised to put an immediate ice pack on that area. Then we also have here the cryosurgery uh, from the word cryo, from the cryogenics. This is a surgery using a deep freezing. If the temperature of the body is lowered, of course, there will be a drop in the metabolic rate and most of bodily functions are slowed. So they are using this cryosurgery. Another type of this is that cold is used to freeze the small regions of the body. So this treatment is applicable in warts and tumor treatment in the removal. They are freezing that area to 
trick that area. And then for freezing, small parts of brain can be frozen to treat Parkinson's disease. And then a detached retina can be reattached by spot freezing it. Then finally, lower temperature can serve as preservative as in food refrigerators and freezers. So for example, the blood, bone marrow, and sperm can be preserved for the uh, upcoming operation. So when these materials have been frozen, it can be towed later to revive so that it can be used by the donor or by the receiver. So that is all for diagnostic and therapeutic uses of heat and cold under heat and temperature and medical physics.